The heat's on for the U.S. national team. MLSers thrive in World Cup qualifying and the Seattle Sounders thrill at CenturyLink next on The Daily. Hey everybody, welcome to another edition of The Daily here with Andrew Eby. I'm Nick Fershaw, World Cup qualifiers, the talk of the town on this Monday. We'll start with the U.S. national team. They're in Columbus, Ohio, ahead of that big game against Jamaica on Tuesday night. Andrew, you go back to Friday night. The uh, 2-1 loss down in Kingston, the first time the reggae boys have ever knocked off the Americans, and it really puts Jurgen Klinsmann and his guys, their backs are up against the wall in this one. Yeah, this is really a must win for Jurgen Klinsmann and his team. Three games remaining in the group stages here to get onto the hexagonal. They've got to win this one, and Jamaica's going to be full of confidence after that 2-1 win. Letton Shelton saying after that one that that was the most important goal he'd ever scored for Jamaica. The big worries in this one, who plays along that back line? Clarence Goodson's going to be suspended with yellow card accumulation. Carlos Bocanegra, the obvious choice to, to walk in there. We'll have to see how that develops. And will Michael Parkhurst hold on to his starting spot? Yeah. Steve Trundolo pushing behind him. But the other big concern, how will the U.S. get goals? And it all comes down to width. Tried to play through the middle too much on Friday. They'll try to go wide. Maybe Breck Shea will be a part of that. Also curious to see how Kyle Beckerman plays in this one or how many minutes he gets. He took a lot of the blame in that loss on Friday night down in Kingston, the Real Salt Lake uh, captain. We'll see how he performs, how many minutes he's going to get now the second time around again. Jamaica Tuesday night, 8 p.m. Eastern on ESPN2. You can catch a live chat on MLSsoccer.com. Next up, the Canadian national team also in action on Friday night. They got a big 1-0 win over Panama, so the Canucks continue to surprise a little bit in their group. They're actually on top of that group after the 1-0 win. Dwayne De Rosario from DC United gets the winner, and it was sort of a sneak attack from the Canadian national team. Opportunistic, the theme of the night for the Canadians. A, a simple little free kick that all of a sudden Panama turned their backs on. Atiba Hutchinson steps up, chips it to the back post, and as he's wont to be, Dwayne De Rosario was in the right place at the right time. A simple finish for him, giving the Canadians a point lead at the top of that group. Of course, they have to go to Panama, as you said, a very difficult match. But if they're able to get a result of any kind, a draw would be huge for them even. They'll really have good room moving forward there at the top of the group. They host Cuba and then go to Honduras, so it won't be easy, but they're in a good position right now. Tuesday night to 8 p.m. Eastern on Sportsnet up in Canada. You mentioned Honduras. They got a big win over Cuba over the weekend, and MLSers had a lot to do with it. Three goals there, Marvin Chavez, Jerry Benson, and Victor Bernardez all get on the board. We also saw Carlos Ruiz, the former MLSer, get a couple goals for Guatemala, and Robbie Keane with a goal for the Republic of Ireland over the weekend. Well, only one MLS game on the docket this weekend on a sparkling Saturday afternoon up at CenturyLink Field in Seattle, and the host Sounders gave their fans what they came to see, a 2-1 win over Chivas USA. They had to do it the hard way. They had to come from behind 1-0 early after a goal from Nick LaBroca, but Eddie Johnson, two goals, and Freddie Montero with a great cross on the game winner. Yeah, a beautiful ball flattered in. Eddie Johnson just did what he's done all season with his head, just burying that cross for the win for the Sounders in the 89th minute. A very, very big win for them. They're now into second place in the Western Conference. Eddie Johnson, meanwhile, is also number one in the record books there in Seattle, in the MLS uh, record books for goals scored in a season. So congratulations to him, but they've got to be happy where things are going. Still no Mauro Rosales, a little bit of an injury holding yeah. him back, and it didn't matter. Three points, Sounders march on, Chivas, Lots of questions at this point. So the Sounders up into second place. They pass up RSL. And you look at the top of the table and you find the San Jose Earthquakes. They are the first team this season in MLS to clinch a postseason berth. Chivas USA's loss means that the San Jose Earthquakes are going to the playoffs. That's a, maybe a little bit of a surprise when you look back at the beginning of the season. I don't know if a lot of people expected the Quakes to clinch this early, but they are the first team to clinch the MLS postseason. Well, last but not least, the start of 24 under 24. That debuts on Monday. That's our annual series that's uh, really become one of the favorites at MLSsoccer.com. This is its in third installment. You look at past winners, uh, Breck Shea and Freddie Montero, the best young players in MLS. Always a great series on the site. Yeah, 20 through 24 coming through today. Just who will be on it? That's the big question right now. A lot of the guys that made on this list, I've seen some sneak peeks. Maybe not ones that you would expect. Yeah. So who will make it at the end of that list? Who will be the guys on the fringe? That's what we'll find out. Make sure to watch that as the series goes on. We'll talk a little bit about that, as well as the U.S. national team and the Canadian national team on the latest edition of Extra Time Radio. The podcast comes out on Monday. iTunes, Buzzsprout, and Stitcher Radio. And for all the coverage of the World Cup qualifiers, log on to MLSsoccer.com.